Right, hi and welcome to this quarter light glass replacement and this is for the Ford Transit Connect from between 2006 and 2013. You can see the model in front of you there. The actual window we will be replacing is the quarter light which is the one that is just above the wing mirror that you can see there or the door mirror and what we're going to do now is get into it and let's show you how it's done. Right now, your first little job here is obviously getting your tools ready and you're going to need some Torx bits. Two way drivable, so obviously the best way to do it is if you've also got if you've got the ratchet type, so, so you can put a ratchet on the end of it for cracking the actual um, T screws or the Torx screws and also a screwdriver led one so you can actually spin those bolts out. For the simple reason is, is you're going to have to take the door card off but before that, as you can see now where I'm looking at that, I'm having a look down there to make sure that all the um, bolts and what have you are easily accessible. So the first thing is, is up above on the actual door rubber itself, if you follow the wind around right at the top, there's like a little round circle. You have to flick that out and there is an actual torque screw behind there. That is vitally important that you get that undone. Then it's just a matter of stripping the door down so what we'll do now is we'll put it up into fast motion and we'll get that door stripped down till we get to the next stage Now we've come to another tricky little bit, I've left it in fast motion but as you can see the door handle has a plastic cover on it which sometimes can be quite difficult to get off. The way I recommend you do this is if you haven't got the purpose built tools is you use a small flat screwdriver with a sock over it to protect the plastic that you're levering against. That's the way I do it, either a sock or a very thin microfiber cloth. The next one we're coming to there, as you can see, is the actual door handle. At the back of the door handle is a little um, flick out um, button. You flick that out and there's a torque screw behind that and then it should all come off in your hands. the door panels off. <clears throat> Don't forget two little tips here. One thing right from the beginning which I forgot to mention is your first job is obviously letting the driver's side or passenger side door window, so basically the electric door window, wind it right down to the bottom before you even start the job. Now also make sure that you keep the keys somewhere safe, either leave them in the ignition or put them in safely in your pocket somewhere because the old transits, this type of one, if you've not actually sorted out in the ECU, it can lock itself once the actual keys have not been in the ignition or the ignition has been inactive for a certain period of time. So you do have to be very careful of that. Right, this next section of the job that we're getting into now, as you can see if you look at both sides, there's a lot of cleaning up to be done. There's broken glass in there and you've got to get every tiny little shard of it out because otherwise it will stop you from getting the new piece of glass in nice and comfortably snugly and make sure that all the, line, the holes line up at the end of it if you've got any broken pieces of glass in there your thing is your line your, the holes in the actual um up bar which you can see just underneath on the right hand side underneath our kids armpit there that little bar that goes up that is held solid with a bolt at the top now that will not line up if 
you have got any pieces of glass left in that rubber. So the rubber around the, wind, the little quarter light window has to be absolutely spotless. Now it's quite simple this, the pillar where you can see running up on the right hand side there where my finger's just pointing at, that there, that pillar, you can pull that right back and then just manhandle the rubber out. The best thing to do is just get your gloves on and manhandle that rubber out and it makes it much, much easier to clean out. When you're cleaning it out, use, um, what we used was we used a paintbrush, an old stiff paintbrush to get all the bits of glass out and obviously we pulled the bigger bits out and we also used a little hoover. So we had a little hoover that would pull all the glass bits out. Don't forget, it's really, really important and all to keep your work area clean because you're working in glass, it's very dangerous stuff. So you make sure that you keep sweeping round and making sure that there is no bits left on the floor because don't forget they can go in your tyres as easily as they can go in anybody else's. And the last thing you want to do is somebody's dog that's walking past or something like that for it to cut its ball. So just be careful as you're actually doing the job. So now what we're going to do is go back into fast motion again while we actually clean all this glass out and get prepared for putting the new piece of glass in. Right, so here we are now, pulling the actual rubber out that the window sits into. <laughs> As you can see there, we're pulling the actual old rubber out so we can put it around the new window. Now when you will notice when you're taking the old um, bits of glass out, there's like a, a little string of adhesive that was holding the glass in. Now this, we have been informed by Ford, is a manufacturing process and does not need to happen for your replacement window. So you do not need to put adhesive in there to stick it back in. So you don't need any mastic or out like that in it. It was literally just to hold the rub around the glass while it was put into the actual frame during manufacture. <coughs> As you can see there, we're digging the last bits of glass out and what have you. As I say, it's absolutely imperative that it's 100% clean when you come to put your new piece of glass in. Right, so what we'll do now is we'll speed it up and get onto that little part where we start putting the new piece of glass in. Right, so the, I will not even say it's the hard part, it's more fiddly than anything. This part of the job now is coming to a close, as you can see there, the pair of us are doing a little bit of finishing off. As I've said a couple of times before, it's absolutely crucial that you get all the pieces of debris and all the pieces of glass out. You've got to get all the pieces of that old adhesive that came from the factory fitting, all that's got to be out of it. We just used a small flat screwdriver and some some white spirit to get that all out and then what we did was we're thinking the window has already been prepped we did that while we were sat having a brew before we even started the job so that was out of the packaging and everything and we got that prepared and it's just going to be coming in any second now we're going to start fitting the, the actual glass in itself what you do is as you can see we pull the rubber right out till it's just hanging from the top from the bar at the top there and this is we, the way that we found is the easiest way to put the glass in is you put the rubber around the glass and then you put the glass into the actual frame itself. So we put the rubber around the glass and then the big key to this is get some washing up liquid. Use plenty of washing up liquid to lubricate the rubber and the, and the glass going back in. This will make your life 10 times easier. So be pretty generous with the thingy with the washing up liquid, but Keep a rag with you so you can wipe the excess off because obviously the idea of it is it makes the rubber slippy. So in making the rubber slippy, it's going to make your hands slippy. So make sure that you've got a couple of tea towels or something to keep your hands dry and it just means that you'll all be able to grip the glass and the rubber and the rubber, but the rubber will also slide into the actual frame itself. 
so that should go in quite easily. Obviously, you've got to put a bit of um, umpty behind it. There's a bit of shoving and a bit of twisting and a bit of um, manhandling to get back in. But like I say, if you watch it here, you'll see exactly how we've done it. And it's like I say, it's not an hard job. It's quite a simple job. It's a little bit fiddly and what have you, but really, really rewarding. And it'll save you a fortune. Now, here's the glass going back in. There you go, you'll see the use of the washing up liquid. I'm just getting it on my fingers there and getting it around all the edges, getting plenty on. Make sure there's plenty on so it goes into the rubber nice and easy. This is the first little bit, so this is the bit where you put in the glass into the actual rubber surround itself. So that'll go into there nice and easy. And then when you've got the actual glass section into the rubber itself, then you lubricate the rub up so the rub will go into the steel frame. And you'll see that as we go along. So that's the window in now, as you can see, it's all lined up and everything. We've got the actual upright, so we've got the actual upright bar nice and lined up for the torque screw to go back in. You've got to make sure that this all lines up before you make any attempt to reassemble the actual door carb, the door front stanchion, what I like to call a stanchion, or the bar that goes up the up bar, the frame, upright, whatever you want to call it. Before you get make any attempt to get those screws to go back in you've got to make sure that everything lines up properly <coughs> so now as you can see here what we're doing is we're starting in reverse order so what we're going to do now is we're just tightening the uh, door mirror back up slightly so as it's not wobbling about all over the place I'm just doing this finger tight as you can see I'm just doing that finger tight so it pulls the mirror back in so it's not flapping about and also when you put, draw that back in the outside part of the door mirror grips the rubber so that will then hold it in place and stop it from moving about while we're trying to get the rear um, upright bolted back in. 
Right, now we've got everything bolted back in, we've got the upright back in and everything, and now the next job is, before you actually reassemble the door card and everything, make sure that you've got all the window rubber in properly, the door seal, so basically the window seal that goes round from the main window, the electric window that slides up and down, so your main driver's door or passenger door window, and then what you do is you connect the wiring up, as you can see what we're doing here, connect the wiring back up again, and send the window up to make sure that it goes clean to the top and comes clean to the bottom without any interference whatsoever. Because you know if that does that window doesn't go up and down smoothly, there's something wrong somewhere and you're gonna have to do a little bit of troubleshooting to find out where you've gone wrong. Obviously we haven't gone wrong here, so what we're doing now is as you can see as I'm starting to reassemble the door. So it's just a reverse process of when you're taking the door apart literally takes five minutes to put the door back on again. Test everything out again, make sure all your electrics are working properly. You can see there, I've tested all the electric windows, both sides of the car to make sure all the wiring's correct and everything. And then what we'll do is we'll just lock the car up, go for a brew, jobs are good. Right guys, so thanks very much for watching the video. Hopefully this will help one or two of you out out there because it's quite an expensive job. What we'll do is we'll leave a link in the description below as to where to buy the actual door glass itself. It was only cheap, it was only about £39, which was probably about $45, something like that, I don't know. But cheap enough, nice easy job to do, and saved ourselves about £150 in fitting costs for an hour's labour between the two of us, nice and easy. Thanks for watching, take care, and happy motoring.